there! Today is another very nice and warm sunny day and I think it's perfect for another bow review. And I would like to show you the Mini Xerxes. I received this bow last Friday uh, from the hands of Lukas Navalny directly. Uh, it's been um, during the Schalkau event from Thumb Arches Germany uh, Club and uh, he was a guest and his friend Marcin as well. And uh, so we took the opportunity to not ship but uh, hand over the bow directly. And so the first shots I have already done last week. And uh, you can see here the video that has been taken by Ute. Thank you very much Ute for doing this and um, here they are. Jetzt in Zeitlupe, sonst geht's mit dem Foto nicht. Das ist echt cool. <lacht> ja! More arrow, das ist. Weil das einfach so. Ja, aber ich habe ja auch Blut so the man in the background is Lukas. He has uh, handed over some arrows and yeah, it was just uh, instantly very nice shooting with the mini axis. Um, so, regarding the specs, what do we have? So this bow is very short, as you can already imagine. So these arrows have a length of 30 inches, I think. Yeah, 30, 30 inches. Mm -hmm. So you have an impression. Um, from knock to knock, this bow has 42 inches and strung 37.5. Um, the nominal strength is 39 pound at 28 inches and 28 inches is the max draw of this bow. Um, the brace height is 6.75 inches and the weight only 290 grams. We have a zia length from here to there approximately um, of 10 inches for both sides and um, the handle circumference, circumference or what, you know what I mean, is 4 inches and uh, overall the handle is relatively short, I'll show you in a bit in detail and the um, bending length we have of 25 inches. So it's a very short bow that looks, um, at my size, very nice. Uh, so for me it's just perfect. My um, draw, Turkish draw, is approximately 28 inches long. And so this is then perfect for this. Regarding the name, Mini Xerxes. So Lukas has also a Xerxes, the long version. Uh, which, by the way, I have um, ordered as the hornbow version he offers, uh, but this will take a while, so don't get too excited about this. Um, the Xerxes uh, was um, a Persian king of kings uh, who has, was born in 519 BC and died 465 BC. Um, and he was the king of Persia and uh, eventually also a pharaoh of Egypt. Um, famous of his uh, battle against the Spartans, but uh, yeah, so look up uh, the history in itself. It's the person of Xerxes was a little different than he was shown by the Greek, but don't, don't mind about that one. Um, the bow is named of this because um, there are reliefs of Persian, um, like this one. And you see um, that there are some, I don't know what it is, quivers on the back, but in none of these thingies are arrows. You know, so I think for arrows they are quite huge. Um, they remind me on uh, some kind, in German it's called Kiepe. Um, this is something you put on your back and if you collect um, wine berries, you put them in there. Yeah, and this is a relatively large thing. But I don't know what this really is. So um, obviously I don't have a clue how a matching quiver would look like. 
Um, so I'm free to design one myself. Uri, then what do we have? What else? Um, ah, arrow weight. Lukash didn't limit it. Yeah, so you can use seven grain. He says that's no limit, so you can use even six grain per pound. But um, if you go to the bamboo archery table, it's recommended to use 10 grain per pound. Um, my arrows that I have here. Uh, uh, 388, 86 grain um, in weight, and so um, it's approximately 10 grain per pound, a little less maybe. So let's measure the current strength. Nominal is 39, I said. So we only go to this rubber band. So we are here, 44, 1, 4. So it's only a bit depending on uh, um, the parameters of the day. And today we have here in the sun 28 uh, degrees Celsius and approximately 28% humidity. Um, this thermometer is not long outside, so approximately it's even less. So now it's 27. Um, at low humidity, bows become a little stronger eventually. Okay, now I think these are all the parameters you need to know and now we can shoot. Okay, as always, I show you how the fitting is for my hand. So you can see here and that I still have space between um, um, the thumb area and the fingertips. Um, I think this is a very nice handle. Maybe for large hands a bit small. Yeah, you see here. It's very nicely shaped. So I have here um, secured the leather with uh, my tape. And this is not so beautiful like the bow. I could just round it here a bit. But yeah, it's functional. Okay, you see here, uh, it's more or less a Turkish handle, very nice painting. And um, this is some kind of um, dark tan green, I would say. Uh, today I have set myself a knocking point here. And now you can see um, the shape of the strong circles. Saw it? Want to see it again? <laughs> Um, I've calculated um, the weight arrow uh, based on the strength of the bow. It currently it's 8.8. .8. And um, now about the feeling of the draw. It's uh, very smooth. So if I draw here, yeah, I can feel the strength. But uh, it's a very smooth draw as you can see it in the um, in the drawing curve there is no hand shock no vibration uh, no hand shock, of course uh, it's a Navalny bow but um, there's even no vibration And I think uh, doing katra is very easy with this bow. As you can see, um, it has the perfect length. And here, if I pull it, one, two, done. 
Now, so even um, this oscillation we have is very minor. One, done. So, very good. Um, we have here a bow with um, um, a horn effect painting that Lukas does himself. He has also done here um, the layer below it. So he has stained it, I think. Um, the painting has been done by um, an artist. And so this is a cooperation. Yeah, very nice. So during the event in Schalkau, um, we have also had some two workshops with uh, Armin Hilmer. And I try now to uh, reprogram my muscle memory by doing it slowly. As you said, if you think you do it slowly, do it even slower. Well, then, then it might be not entertaining if I do too slow. So yeah, let's do it like this pace. So this um, doing practice in Katra with this bow is just perfect for me. <laughs> Shoulder against the target or towards the target. Yo. Closer. So even the sound is very nice. So after the release, it's just a boom. And that's cool. Oh, is there a sound? So it's a very silent bow. Very beautiful, you see the vibrant colors. And um, here it's uh, a new technique to make um, the, the surface here a bit more vivid. So it's not only plain uh, blue, but a bit like clouds. It has now these arrows. Um, they have a spine of 600 and a weight of 445 grain, uh, which means this combination has 10 grain per pound then. The other arrows uh, went a bit more to the right and maybe this is better. Let's see. No, then it's me. <laughs> That's nearly a center shot. But I went a bit more to the left. Yeah. Show you. Now the first went to the right and the others were quite close. What else to say? Um, what I not have mentioned so far is uh, the seer creation. You can see here that we do not have um, uh, a string bridge as itself, but we have a groove where the string lies in. I can show it here like this. You can see it. And this is special about this bow. Um, the build quality is very nice. So, uh, Sorry about the noise. Um, this is just as we know it from Lukas, you know, always uh, on spot. And the painting is um, very precise, very well done. And the price for the paintings have risen. Uh, so uh, as everything. And yeah, so this is just, I don't know how many uh, strengths the string has, but yeah, center serving is nice, color scheme, 
cool. And yeah, regarding the arrows, I think the spine of 500 is very good, basically. Maybe I need more distance than to uh, shoot with the 500 spine. And for the closer distance, 600 is good too. bit too high. Too high. <laughs> Speed test with the lighter arrows, the 8.8 um, .8 grain per pound arrows in this case. Um, these have large feathers and um, fur, so this slows, slows down a bit the speed. I can also do um, test the others. Uh, the feather surface is smaller. Hundred seventy one. Hundred seventy. Hundred seventy six. And now let's check the others. Now with the uh, um, ten grain per pound arrows, I want to uh, find out if the feather shape or the surface has an impact. But um, I guess my release has more impact than the feathers. Um, I have uh, seen in the previous videos that um, I sometimes have a collapsing release, and that's why I only use one arrow at a time. Hopefully I prevent it now. Hundred sixty one. Hundred fifty seven. Duplicated. Okay, I've calculated it, and um, the average speed of with the uh, lighter arrows was around 172 feet per second, and uh, calculated down with the heavier arrows, it was 168. Yeah, so um, it's not the feathers; it's uh, my release. Yeah, so sometimes it's better, sometimes not. And whenever there's a collapsing release included, then uh, the speed goes down, of course. Yeah. So I always um, try to avoid it, but it's uh, difficult since I don't feel it. So it's about the movement and it's difficult if you have arrows in the hand. So I'll do my best, promise. <laughs> so another time practicing release. It felt good, but I see later if it was. Hopefully, did it. <laughs> Resume. What do I think of my pretty mini axis? It's such a lovely bow. Um, it not only fits my size very well, uh, it shoots very nice 
uh, it has a very nice sound, the shape is beautiful, the handle is nice, nothing hurts. Um, it's easy to perform kata. Uh, and if I do the release properly, we have a moderate good speed and um, feeling is just awesome. Um, regarding the speed, yeah, there are those that have a higher speed, but you know, these are very small ZIAs and I think this is a, a very good result for such a small bow. And um, yeah, what else to say? Uh, I could compare it um, from size, uh, it's similar to the Sipahi Plus, the short Sipahi Plus. The short supply plus is a little longer, a little more. So this is even shorter. Um, yeah, I think it's awesome. So if you um, shoot such a small bow, uh, it's not about how oh, you have a high speed or so. Um, during the Schalkau event, there was also um, a, a flight um, event in the rain and was it Armin who shot um, the Mini Xerxes? So there was another model than mine. And he reached 240 meters. This is really good. Yeah, so um, once you do it right, it works. Yeah, so it can be faster if you use lighter arrows. Uh, it's faster if you do a proper release. Um, so don't take my measurements too seriously. You can improve that, probably. But um, the feeling for this bow would be the same. So it's really a jewel in my collection. And um, I love shooting this bow, really. So yeah, I'm very happy that I have it. And um, the long axis shoots differently. So there is much more mass. And this is a very snappy, and um, agile bow. I would say yes, it's an agile bow. Okay, so thanks everybody for watching and for your patience. As always, again, sorry about the environmental noises. It's a Saturday and people can work in their gardens. So yeah, that's why. So thanks again and uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.